Hello and welcome to another episode of The Word for Kids. I'm Jamie and I'm guiding you through the books of 1st and 2nd Samuel in a series of 20 episodes. Last time we learned about how Saul turned against David. Jonathan, who was Saul's son, became best friends with David and Jonathan loved him very much. But because David had such great success, Saul became more and more envious and afraid of David. When David was playing the lyre for him, Saul threw his spear at him twice, but David was able to escape. Later, when Saul realized that his own daughter Michal was in love with David and that the Lord was with him, he grew even more afraid of him and ordered Jonathan to kill David, but he would not do it. And instead, he gave David a heads up about Saul's plan and told him to go into hiding. Jonathan convinced Saul not to kill David under oath, so David returned to Saul. But sometime later, Saul again tried to kill David with his spear as David played the lyre for him. David fled to his home, and his wife Michal helped him escape and tricked the men coming to look for him. Meanwhile, David fled to Samuel, and that's where we left off last time. Are you ready for today's adventure? Let's go! David went to Nob and found Ahimelech, the priest, who trembled when he met David. Why are you alone? he asked him. David answered him, The king sent me on a mission and said to me, No one is to know anything about the mission I am sending you on. As for my men, I have told them to meet me at a certain place. Now then, what do you have on hand? Give me five loaves of bread, or whatever you can find. But Ahimelech told David, I don't have any ordinary bread on hand. However, there is some consecrated bread here. After some discussion back and forth, the priest did give David the consecrated bread. David also asked Ahimelech for a sword or a spear, and Ahimelech offered David the sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom David had killed. David said, There is none like it. Give it to me. One of Saul's servants was there that day, detained before the Lord. His name was Doeg the Edomite. Saul heard that David and his men had been discovered. Saul was seated under a tree with his spear in his hand and his officials standing at his side. He became worried about David turning against him and thought his men had conspired against him as well. He said, No one tells me when my son makes a covenant with the son of Jesse. Remember, that's David he's talking about. He continued, No one is concerned about me or tells me that my son has incited my servant to lie in wait for me as he does today. And Doeg the Edomite spoke up. I saw David come to Ahimelech at Nob. Ahimelech inquired of the Lord for him, gave him provisions, provisions are just food, and gave him the sword of Goliath. Then King Saul sent for Ahimelech the priest and all the men of his family who were priests at Nob. Saul said to him, Why have you conspired against me, you and the son of Jesse, giving him bread and a sword and inquiring of God for him, so that he has rebelled against me and lies in wait for me, as he does today? Ahimelech reminded Saul that David was loyal and highly respected and that he had inquired of God for him at other times as well. Ahimelech begged Saul not to accuse him or his family of a conspiracy because he knew nothing about it. But the king replied, You will surely die, Ahimelech, you and your whole family. Saul ordered the guards at his side to kill the priests because they had sided with David. But the king's officials were not willing to do it. So the king then ordered Doeg to kill them, and that day he did. He killed 85 priests. Not only the priests, but Doeg also destroyed the town of Nob, killing its men, women, children, infants, cattle, sheep, and donkeys. One of Ahimelech's son, Abiathar, escaped and fled to join David. He told David that Saul had killed the priests of the Lord, and David said to him, That day, when Doeg the Edomite was there, I knew he would be sure to tell Saul. I am responsible for the death of your whole family. Stay with me and don't be afraid. The man who wants to kill you is trying to kill me too. You will be safe with me. David stayed in the wilderness strongholds and in the hills of the desert of Ziph. Day after day, Saul searched for him, but God did not give David into his hands. When he was in Horesh, he learned that Saul had again come out to take his life. But Saul's son Jonathan went to David and helped him find strength in God. Don't be afraid, he said. My father will not lay a hand on you. You will be king over Israel, and I will be second to you. Even my father Saul knows this. The two of them made a covenant before the Lord, and then Jonathan went home. But David stayed in Horish. And that's where our story ends for today. It's time for today's verse to remember. <laughs>
Today's verse is Nahum 1-7. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. One more time. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. Nahum 1-7. That brings us to our word of the day. Eugene the Turtle here with another word of the day. Today's word is refuge. A refuge is a safe place. Like my shell, it's a safe place for me. And David said that God was his refuge. Refuge. The Lord was with David even as his king unfairly pursued him and tried to kill him over and over again. Imagine how scary that must have been, how difficult it would have been to rest, and how lonely David must have felt. But the Bible tells us the Lord is our refuge, our safe place, and David believed that to be true for him, even as he hid in the wilderness. The book of Psalms includes some things David wrote about God's protection over him during this time. One other thing that stands out to me in this story is that his best friend, Jonathan, came to him and encouraged him and helped him find strength in God. Think about your own life and friendships. When a friend is going through something really hard, what are some ways you can encourage him or her, just like Jonathan encouraged David? Think of ways you can help your friends remember to trust in God to be their refuge, their safe place when they go through hard times. Sometimes just a hug, a listening ear, and a kind word can be a big encouragement. If you have a friend who loves you and helps you through hard times, be sure to tell them how much you appreciate them. And look for ways to be that kind of friend to other people around you. That's all we have for today. I can't wait to see you again soon for another episode of The Word for Kids.